로마인서 14장 마지막 23절 보게 되면은 무슨 믿음으로 하자는 것이 죄라고 했습니다. 성경 말씀 볼때 네 몸을 위해서 네 자식과 남편을 위해서 가족을 위해서 The Bible says, Have you really prayed in tears for yourself or for your family? Day and night, have you made your tears as your food to pray and intercede? Do I say anything that's not in the Bible? Jesus is God Himself. He is the Creator. Hebrews chapter 2 tells us that he is without sin. For whom did he come to this world and pour his bloody tears? For whom did he sweat, fall like drops of blood? For whom did he not sleep, couldn't eat, mistreated, wherever he went, faced misunderstandings? Unbelief, unsatisfaction, all the evil words of this world were just poured upon him. Where could he possibly stand? Foxes are standing, the birds of the nest, but the Son of Man has no place to rest his head. Jesus said this, weeping, and great tears. He was so hungry that he went to the fig tree, but it only was full of leaves and had no fruit. So Jesus said, man will not come to you and you will not bear fruit forever. So when he went to Jerusalem and came back in the evening, he saw that this tree that he had cursed in the morning was completely withered and dry. Wasn't this word to teach us men? He had this right to take away even the right to the life of human beings. And this Lord shed his tears for us. So have you cried for your mother or for your father? Did, you, did your body ever tremble feverishly when you pray? As if you're freezing cold wearing only long johns in the winter time. As you pray in tears for your parents and your siblings, have you ever experienced that desperation and longingness? Or even for yourself, have you prayed in much tears? According to the Bible, God says He will never reject tearful prayers. He will never reject prayers and tears. You don't know what kind of illness may be in your body, yet you don't even pray about that illness before God. You don't even cry in tears about it. And yet you just superstitiously just want a, a magic wand. Then you're not a Christian. Today during the um, General Assembly for Women's Ministry, I have preached a bit, and I asked, why is that you've believed for many, many years, and yet you still pray and no answer? Ever since you confessed your faith and you've been coming to church, you went to this church, that church, this mountain, that mountain, this healing assembly, that revival assembly. And when you go there, you see the preacher banging on the pulpit telling you to pray. Prayer is the key to open a lock. We heard this just so many times, but have you prayed and received the answer? There are two reasons why you haven't. Because our life is outside Jesus. Our lives are not inside Jesus. Also, how much word has God given you all these years that you have come to church? Have you connected all those words in like a, a one necklace and cherished in your hearts? Haven't you lost all those beads of the words? Because you are outside the Lord. Because you have lost the word. So you just pray with human cleverness and common sense. So is God receiving your prayer? 
will he receive your prayer our Lord has clearly said that in John chapter 15 verse 7 that if you really want your prayer to be answered then pray in the Lord also secondly do not lose the word that I have given you and pray in those words then whatever you pray whatever you ask I will answer and give this is God's promise Like King Asa, who did not believe in God, he did not believe in the word of creation that can unleash the miracles of blessings. Instead, he trusted more in good doctors in town. So then God put up with King Asa for three years. God thought Asa would seek him, and he thought that he would pray to God. From the heaven, God looked down but King Asa totally forgot all about God. He called in his servants asking, is there any good medicine, any good doctor? God was, in fury, as God was furious in the end and put him to death. That is in Second Chronicles chapter 16. I am not telling you that you shouldn't take medication or go to a pharmacy. I'm saying that we must seek God first. Isn't medication also God's creation? If we get sick, we will lose everything. Our husband, wife, and children, a rich man dies of hunger. You know, once you're sick, food is only a picture. You cannot eat it because you cannot digest it. See, death is not the end. When man gets sick, that is a big trouble. That's why today we are having a special healing assembly. Those who didn't come must have a wonderful destiny. How much did Jesus love Lazarus even after he died? When hearing that Lazarus died, look at Jesus crying in front of his tomb. God himself was crying. Why? Because of the sin. Because the outcome, the wage of sin is death. Romans chapter 6 verse 23, the last verse says this. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I wanted to gather your children together the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, yet you were unwilling. The things which make for peace now have been hidden from your eyes. Jesus already saw the destruction yes, at hand and saw so how the children will be leveled to the ground. A nation will be in ruin. So Jesus wept as he saw this destruction of Jerusalem, looking Jerusalem from Mount Olives. Luke chapter 19, verse 41 says this. Apostle Paul, too, for the sake of the people whom he evangelized, he didn't pray not only for the congregation in Jerusalem, but also for the people at Ephesus. For three years, night and day, he did not cease to admonish one another with tears. That is in Acts chapter 20, verse 31. Look at Samuel's mother, Hannah, who could not give birth. But she cried, she wept before God as she prayed to him. So as a result, she gave birth to prophet Samuel and also five sons and daughters. When she offered up prayer in tears, what did God tell her? I will remember you and visit you and give you a son. Even when you're sick and ill, if you cry out to God and pray to Him, God will see that and will remember you and consider you. You know, even between human beings, when I have a problem and somebody thinks of me and help me out, 
then how refreshing is that and how great of peace and comfort do you find because of that person? Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 says, Jesus offered up both prayers and supplication with loud crying and tears. Jesus, he came to this world and he lived a life of tears all because of us. His footsteps are trails of tears. His food was tears. Look at Psalm 39 verses 12 through 13. His food were tears. In Psalm 22, uh, Psalm 6 verse 8, God is looking at our tears. People without tears still have far to go in their illness. Now that is no hope. You know, if you're really frustrated, if you're really um, desperate, and like, let's say your child is dying, the mother will cry in tears. Blood will come out from her tears because she's so desperate. And she will bite her own tongue to, to infuse her blood into a dying child. That's how desperate a mother's love will be. Because you're not desperate, your cries, your prayer does not have any tears. Because you're not fervent, you don't really burst in this great anguish and prayer and tears. That is why Apostle Paul also said to the people at Corinth, he was so frustrated that he shut himself up in his, a chamber. And he cried and cried. That is written in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Whenever I read 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and think of the tears of Apostle Paul, then I also cry too for our, our congregation. This fervent prayer of repentance and tears will, will find compassion in God. God will have compassion upon that person, and that is how your illnesses will be healed. A vow and prayers and tears, as we find in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 5 and below. Look at King Hezekiah. He became very proud. He believed, and so the nation became very wealthy, and the lives became very comfortable, but they were wasting too much in the end. And so God actually struck the palace. And then he struck all the possessions of the people. And so prophet Isaiah came to king and said, you are going to die in three days. And so when he came to King Ezekiah, the uh, king says, Oh, prophet Isaiah, what brought you here? So Isaiah says, God's revelation came upon me and told me that you will die in three days. Hezekiah just threw his crown and he threw off his robe and he just cried and cried and said, God, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. I was arrogant. There are a lot of things I've done wrong, but isn't there also good things that I have done before you? Please remember those good deeds. So he rubbed his face against a wall as he cried in tears and pray to God. And so his skin, a face, a face, peeled off. That's how much he cried and cried. And so when, even before prophet Isaiah came out from the palace, God says, Isaiah, stop. And so go back into, go back to the king. Oh, but God already told him he's going to die in three days. And God says, I know, I know, go back. So what do I tell him now? He says, tell him, I have seen his repentance and his tears. Isaiah chapter 38 verse 5 states this. God says he saw King Hezekiah's tears of repentance. And secondly, God says, I will extend 15 years to his life. Isaiah, go tell him that. I will extend 15 years to his life. Do you understand this? God added 50 more life, years to his life. 15 years. You see, 
Repentance and tears will bring God near to you. God will not forsake you. He will not turn his face away from you. Didn't, didn't I just give you Isaiah chapter 38 verse 5? Please read it. God added 50 more years. In Psalm 42 verse 3 also, those people who make tears as their food, they will not only partake in the heavenly feast, but there will also surely be an answer to their prayers. Even if you are so ruined because of the illness, you're still so comfortable. There's no desperation. Oh God, I went to a doctor and he told me that I'm sick. Oh God, please heal me. Please heal me. Would God really heal you when you pray like that? How wonderful is time of prayer. A time of prayer is time of to have conversation with God. But once you're hospitalized, you have lost everything. You have lost your time. You have lost all the energy. What is better? Would you rather be hospital, hospitalized or would you rather just pray in tears? Praying in tears is so much better because if you do so, then you will not lose yourself, you will not lose your family, you will not lose your wealth, you will not lose your son or daughters, you will not lose your friends, you will not lose anything. But you will lose once you're sick all the blessings of health, the blessings that God gave you upon your waters. Food, you have lost all of that because you cannot eat once you are sick. So what those old blessings have, been, have anything to you, have anything to do with you? That's why you have to be healthy. Only then you can have a, a, a good sound church life, a faith life. You can sing praises. You can evangelize. You can do a lot of good things to help out other people. Even the reason your children are growing well is because you have prayed for your children. How gratifying is that, right? God will help you to earn money. This is all because of God's blessing. But if you were to just make money on your own, then the sorrow of this world will follow you everywhere. When you make money, yeah, you will feel good about it. But once your business begins to decline, then the end will only be sorrow. The money that you have earned will begin to poke you. Because of money, you, the people will end up committing suicide. Isn't that what the Bible says? But God says in, in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, when God gives you blessings of wealth, he will not add sorrow to it. God will give you the power to earn wealth. That's why you must not become arrogant. It's not you who did not sleep and you worked all day and night. You did not eat. You saved up when other people spent. You know, you worked when other people played. That's why I've made all this money. You should not ever say that. That is big proud and pride and arrogance before God, and that's big trouble if you're to think like that. If God was behind all of this, God was behind you when you did not sleep, when you worked. God was behind you when you worked because he's the one who gave you the health so that you can make money. What did the Apostle Paul say? He suffered and labored more than any other disciples, but he says, it is not I who have labored. I am what I am. I did all of this, but not I, but because of the grace of God was with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10 is where he made that confession. Likewise, when you eat, you must pray. Did you give thanks to God when you eat? God is the one who gave you the blessings of life. So when you eat, do you say, thank you, God. I'm eating the food and water that you have blessed. I believe in your blessings of health, life, and longevity. And then eat. But if you had gone outside and you missed the time to eat, you just dash to the table and you pick up your food, and you pick up your spoon, and you just close your eyes and open your eyes right back up. I shovel the food into your mouth. I don't understand that. When you pray for like noodles, it must be, you must pray just short. Prayer for noodles should be very short. And after a few years, I know which elders do long prayers. So I'll never let them pray. I do it myself. 
So when you pray for noodles, you just have to really give thanksgiving. You know, you just have spit all of the food. And when you pray, then you have to move the naengmyeon, uh, the the noodle bowl to the side so the spit will not fall into it, right? And you have to make sure your prayer is very short for food. So from now on, I pray you really give thanks to God, and really you have to pray in tears. You know, you don't, you have no single drop of tear in your eyes. Only then you'll find peace in your house. Uh, what's the point if I say all of this? There's so many verses in the Bible. What is a title? If you just believe and obey, right? If you just believe and obey, there will be a big miracle. Do you understand? God cannot do nothing once you have you uh, to people who really believe, right? God cannot say no when you believe. Right? God says, okay, pass, pass. You know, God loves those who believe. God loves those people with faith the most. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, you cannot uh, please God. It's impossible to please God without faith. Only when we have faith, God is pleased. It says, if you have that faith, God will reward you. Some people say, okay, yeah, you know what? You know, if I, um, as long as I make it to heaven and I'm, I'm not sent to hell, then I'm satisfied. But that is not actually a faith. That's actually this unbelief. Because Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, you know, if you really have faith, then you have to receive reward too. Because God is a reward of those who seek Him. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 through 15, it talks about all the uh, consequences or outcomes of faith. Some people's faith is like. Um, like a straw or hay. And some people with better faith, um, they are like wood. But all of them will be consumed in fire. The, fire. the faith that God is pleased with is like the faith of a gemstone because they do not burn in fire, right? So you know, if your work is burnt up, if your faith is burnt up, then you know, um, that person is saved, but it's going to be like uh, you're saved through the fire. But the fire is trial and tribulation and suffering. And when those sufferings come, then you just let go of faith. Today, the title is, if you just believe the word and obey, then you become John chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. And then when Jesus, uh, when we see what Jesus did, it's, it looks very unscientific and it is very irrational. He um, made a clay of the spittle, right? And he... And then he just uses his feet to put it together. And then he picked it up and then he put it on the eyes of the people. And then says... Go to Siloam and watch. Jesus did not say that you'll be healed. He did not say that his eyes will open. Right? He just says, go wash in Siloam. So if you just believe in that word and go, then that's all you need to do. So he did, just as Jesus said, he went to the Siloam and put the water to his eyes, and his eyes opened. The Bible says his eyes opened. You see, Jesus' word itself is a light. John chapter 1 verse 4 says he is a light of this world. He is a light to the man. And John chapter 8 verse 12 says, I am the light of this world. John chapter 9 verse 4 also says, he is the light itself. So the light commanded. And as a result of believing in that word and obeyed and went, he saw the light and he came in the midst of the light. So the table is believe and obey. But when you will look into the story, please write it down. What does it really mean? It really means, let's just do it first and see. 
let's just do it first and see. So the outside, the title may be, the title is Believe and Obey, but the actual um, content of, is, it is to, let's just do it first and see. So first, let's watch first and see, John chapter 5 verse 7. Secondly, let's first give and see, John chapter 6 verse 9. Third, let's reconcile first and see. Let's reconcile first and see. Matthew chapter 18, verse 33. Fourthly, let's believe first and see. Acts, Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Fifthly, let's go first and see. Luke chapter 7, verse 10. Sixthly, let's follow first and see. Let's follow first and see. Luke chapter 5, verse 11. Seventhly, uh, let's touch the fringe of his cloak first and see. Luke chapter 8, verse 44. Eighth, Let's cry out first and see. Jesus of Nazarene, son of David. Luke chapter 18, verse 39. In ninth, let's climb up first and see. Luke chapter 19, verse 4. Zacchaeus went up to the sycamore tree, right? That's how he met Jesus and was blessed and received salvation. A miracle happened. You are also the son of Abraham. What great blessing is this? Aren't the tax collectors, don't they deserve to be burned in hell forever? Ten, let's just come first and see. Uh, should I go? But whatever led you here, I'm glad you're here. John chapter 4, verse 46. And then, let's rise first and see. Let's rise first and see. John chapter 5, verse 8. And 12, let's stretch out our hand first and see. Let's stretch out our hand first. Mark chapter 3, verse 5. So please repeat after me. If we do, great miracles and blessings will come. So please listen carefully. So some children will buy you clothes. Some children will give you money. But better than that are children who listen to mom and dad. What's the point if your children oh, give you money several times a year or buy your clothes if they do not listen to you? Even if your child might not be able to give you money or not buy you clothes, but whatever you say, your child says, okay, okay. God is the same. When God gives a word, you know, if we just believe in the word and obey and move just as God says, then it will be done to you. God has given us new year, the year of unknown, so that we can fulfill God's will. God wants us to be healthy and be strong to uphold the will and understand this mysterious word of God in the Old and the New Testament and implant faith into your children so that your children will truly live in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 through 2 become the head of this world and receive the same blessings of Abraham and I bless you in the name of the Lord your parents, your siblings in your home, if there's anybody who is ill, 
If you pray for them, and all you have to do is send the word to them. When the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. Look at centurion. He says, Just say the word. When his servant was sick and is about to die, Jesus says, Okay, I'm going to go and I'll heal you. I'm going to heal your servant. But centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. Please just say the word. John, chapter 5. Forty-six says, "Teacher, please come. Te- come heal." So Jesus says, "Just to believe in the word and go." And so the servant came and told him the time that Jesus said to go, and the and the time that he went is the same time as when the child became healed. So do not believe superstitiously that you know somebody has to come here to be healed. Even if your child or somebody may be in far distance, if you just pray for them, intercede for them, and then pray on their sake, and there will be great miracle. Just as I said earlier, you know, if you put your right hand into the uh, sick area of your body, then you can be healed. And so are your family members who are far away from you. Look at the ten lepers. You know, we give glory to God, and all we have to do is just to give thanks to God. When they were healed, God, Jesus says to go and show yourselves to your priests, like a pastor today. So these ten lepers, after they received the word from Jesus, they are on the way to the priest, and on the way they were healed. But those nine of them did not come back to Jesus. Only the Gentile, the Samaritan, came back to Jesus. So Jesus says, were they all healed? Yeah, they were all healed. And so Jesus lamented, only this Gentile came back to give thanks to God. And so I pray that you will please give thanksgiving to God. Do not be stingy with thanksgiving when it comes to terms of prayer, terms of offering, terms of evangelism. We must not be stingy to God. Let's be really generous to our God. Only then God will bless us generously. Let us pray. A God who governs life and death and blessings of all mankind. God, you truly delight in physical and spiritual strength and health of your people. You give word to us every hour so that we can have victorious life in every aspect of our lives. A living God, we have come to come into your church during this assembly of healing. And we have received your word without any doubt. When we believe in the word without any doubt and obey, there was big miracle. Our eyes became bright. Isn't our eyes lamp to our whole body? When our eyes are dim, the whole body is dim. When our eyes are bright, our whole body is bright. Likewise, we know that there is illness or sickness in our body that we don't know of. At this time, we pray in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, all those illnesses be cast out. Please lay your hand on the sick part of your body. And if you don't know where you're sick, then please put your right hand upon your own head. And please listen carefully. And I believe if you just believe and obey, say amen. Right now, Jesus is coming to us through his word. He's approaching us to heal us at this time. Your past, your present, your future. He has seen all and he is calling name. He's calling each and every one of your name. 
and he is standing right in front of you. He is calling out your name. And to God, he s a y s to woman, my daughter, my word has forgiven your sins. Just believe and say Amen. The moment our sins are forgiven, all the illnesses are gone. So, Lord, at this time, with your hand with the undrying blood, may your hand be upon us. Not only us, but upon our family members who are in distant, faraway countries. God, please remember them. I desire that they will also believe you and live in your grace, and they will live for your will. I desire that they will live with you forever. Please bless them physically and spiritually. So they can be strong with your hand of undrying blood. May your hand be upon all the part of our bodies that may be ill. We first pray for the illnesses in our bodies, maybe cancer and digestion. All the illnesses that may be in any part of our organs, our living Lord. We pray the, all the organs in our bodies, no matter what kind of illnesses there may be. Lord, at this time, your hands of undrying blood be laid upon our bodies. At your single word, we believe all the illnesses will run away. I command by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, may all cancer, may all illnesses be completely cast out. You'll be completely free from all illnesses. You'll be completely healed from all the illnesses. Be completely healed from all illnesses and be cleansed. Thank you. We have headache. Our eyes are dim. All the dermatitis or a skin disease or nerve disease. We pray for that. Lord. Of my life. Your precious children are standing before you. Please listen to their fervent prayers and answer their prayers. We desire that they will be completely be liberated from all illnesses, their headaches, dim eyes, all the rheumatists. Or a skin troubles, I command by the name of Jesus Nazareth. May all the sickness in the eyes, may all headaches, may all nerve disease or skin disease be completely removed. I command by the name of Jesus, may you be completely free from all illnesses. Be clean. Be healed completely. And be free from all sickness. Thank you. Lord, please come to us. And touch us with your hand of undrying blood. And we believe that you have healed us. And so when we go back home, the moment we believe and go, we will be healed. Please help us to have faith without any doubt. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will not change. Jesus back then, Jesus today is the same. We have believed in your name. We believe that we have been completely liberated from all the illnesses. So we thank you. We pray all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in thanksgiving.